Hello everyone, this is Nothing with Annie on your screen. I came about Nothing or Lifestyle Fit. I came about Nothing, most especially for Nothing students, for student nurses who want to, you know, do well in their academics, who want to accelerate their career, who want to be um, conversant with what is going on around them, especially when it comes to Nothing. And yeah, on today's video, I'll be talking about, I'll be explaining with very simple and detailed information on how to carry out vital signs during OSCE in the OSCE demonstration room in a typical Nigerian nursing school, how vital signs are being carried out when it comes to exam, when it comes to practical. So that is what I'll be doing on today's video. So if this is a video you're interested in, you really want to know how to carry out vital signs demonstration during practicals when it comes to OSCE, do well to stay tuned and I'll be right back. First of all, you want to know what vital signs are. Vital signs are those basic indicators that actually tell you the general well-being of a patient. They are those indicators that are very important to look out for in the patient. It tells you the general well-being of the patient, how the patient is doing, and this will lead us to the indications for vital signs. Number one is to get baseline data of a patient. Number two is to know the general condition of a patient. And number three is to be able to give your diagnosis, you know, when it comes to a patient, it, it will be able to help you make nothing diagnosis when it comes to a patient. So these are basically the theory indications of vital signs. There are other indications, you do it pre-surgery, post-surgery, you know, when a, medica a particular medication is being given, you also carry out vital signs, especially when it comes to the dosing, you check for the pulse and all that. So these are the basic, in a, well, these are the indications for carrying out vital signs in a patient. So first of all, I'll be starting with temperature using a thermometer because when it comes to vital signs, there are four basic ones to look out for, which is the temperature, pulse, respiration, blood pressure. The fifth one I've been added, which is pain. But these are the four basic vital signs to carry out when it comes to a patient. So I'll be starting first off with temperature using a thermometer. Okay, so we're about to start. Like I said initially, I'll be using the thermometer. This is what a thermometer looks like for those of you who don't know. This is what a thermometer looks like. Hope you are seeing it. This is what it looks like. It has a metallic tip down and it has the mercury inside of it. So build before I start. Before I start this procedure, you know, when you get to the OSCE room, the demonstration room, and you have your examiners, you have to greet them first, introduce yourself using your exam number, because in nursing schools, you don't use your name, you know. So you use your exam number, introduce yourself, and you read out the procedure you were asked to carry out. Before you start any procedure in nursing, you have to wash your hands, you have to maintain aseptic technique. So you will start off by saying, you are going to wash your hands, you done your gloves, very important because these basic basic things have mark and then you gather your equipment before you start your procedure when it comes to patients in nursing you seek for consent before you start any procedure on a patient so i'm going to ask my patient sir i want to carry out a um, vital science procedure on you can i go ahead mm -hmm. can i go ahead mm -hmm. say yes so my patient has given me the go ahead don't mind him i don't know why he's laughing <laughs> <laughs> So my patient has given me the go ahead to carry out, you know, the procedure. I've washed my hands, I've worn my gloves, and I can go ahead with the procedure. So I have my equipment, my equipments with me, which are the kidney dish, the wet swab, the dry swab, the thermometer, the blood pressure, you know, and my apparatus, that is the manometer, and yeah, and re receiver. Those basic things you should have as your equipment. I will display it on the screen for you to see the basic equipment you need for vital signs so starting off i will use the wet swab i don't have a wet swab yet but let's just assume i will use, use my wet swab use the wet swab to clean the thermometer from the top to the bottom before i use it on my patient so after that i would you know locate this is his right this is his left this is his right right this is your right hand where is the right? Okay, this is his right hand. So I'll do well to place the thermometer. You know, after I have, I have cleaned it with the wet swab, I will just locate the axilla, the middle of the axilla, and then the tip of the thermometer will go into there, into the place. And I will leave it still for like five, three to five minutes for it to read very well. That's for the 
tends to show very very easy pretty simple next up i want to you know check the blood pressure i have my sphygmo manometer here this is the type i have you might be giving other types to carry out the procedure or you might be provided with other types to carry out the procedure but basically this is the type i have so this is how it looks like this is where the reading is for this type of signal manometer it has the arrow to help you you know read the signs and before you check the blood pressure you most likely check it on the left hand side of the patient reason is because the heart is nearer you know to the left and it helps you get accurate results so i want to go over to the left hand side of my patient i'm taking consent so i can go ahead to do whatever i want to do so this is the left hand of my patient and I will do well to locate the brachial artery. Let me begin this thought. So I will do well to locate the brachial artery, which is around here. So after I've done that, I'm going to place this and wrap it around this arm, following the direction on the blood pressure curve. I'm going to just wrap this around the arm. Then we are good to go. I have done that. And then this part, I'm going to hook it right on the hand cuff, the blood pressure cuff, so that it's going to stay same. Oh. So I wrapped it around his arm. And this is what it looks like. I don't know if you can see it. Yes, so I'm going to start to form. This is the door, this is the knob. For open and close when you are trying to form and then I have my stethoscope here also this is the diaphragm you can open and close it when it's open you hear the sound very well when it's closed and you tap on the diaphragm the sound becomes faint so before you use your stethoscope make sure the diaphragm is open so that you can hear the sound very well so um, I, I placed the blood pressure cuff 2.5 cm above the radial artery. I placed it 2.5 cm above the radial artery so that I will get accurate results and I'm going to, you know, have enough space to carry on the procedure. So I'll wear my stethoscope. Since I've gotten the radial artery, I can go ahead and place this on the radial artery. And I begin to pump. I will pump up to, up to 200 millimeter mercury. Once it gets to 200 millimeter mercury, I can start to reduce it, you know, by losing this knob. I'm going to start losing. And as I'm doing that, I'm going to hear a sound, the first sound, which is the systolic. When I hear that sound, I will make sure I take record of it. For documentation purpose and then i'll continue to reduce the curve and at the end of the day i'll hear a second sound which is kind of faint which is the story and i'll take note of it so i record i forgot to mention when you check the temperature you can you should make it a point of duty to always record what you get whenever you carry out any procedure it is very important that you document that one has its own mark so I'm done with checking the blood pressure. When I checked this, I got 110 over 80. The normal blood pressure range is 120 over 80 to 140 over 90. I checked this and it gave me 110 over 80. So it's pretty normal. And then I am done with that. So I think it's, it's up to three minutes. So let me remove the temperature, the thermometer. And I have 37 degrees Celsius. I don't know if you can see this. 37 degrees Celsius is what it gave me. So I'm going to do well to also record what I got. Next off is the pulse. When checking the pulse, you make sure you locate the radial artery, which is around this place. So you place your, your three hands Firmly on the radial artery to locate, you know, where you start hearing this um, sound. 
boom boom that is the sound so when you locate it you make sure you press firmly but not too hard in order to get the rate the depth of the sound i've gotten it and i'll start to count for every um and for every rate that the sound gives i'll start to count for like 60 for one minute that's 60 seconds and whatever i get i'm also going to record it so that is that still while checking the pulse i can go ahead to also count the respiration for 60 minutes if you if for 60 seconds if you want to be the fast type you can do for 15 minutes and then you count by four but i would advise as a starter as a beginner just count for the full 60 seconds to get accurate results so for the respiration i will check the rise and fall of the abdomen but i will do well not to allow my patient know i'm actually reading his respiration because at this point he can just you know do anything to distract me he can even hold his breath yes yeah, that is how bad some patients can you know want to frustrate you so i will make sure that he doesn't know i'm counting his respiration check the rising and falling of his abdomen and count for 60 seconds and also record so that is that for vital signs it's pretty easy it's pretty simple if you were asked to check for pain it is also pretty simple that one is by verbalization within the range of zero to ten so i had to dismiss my my patient or i had to dismiss the person who i was using like i said when it comes to pain you verbalize you ask questions know the exact location the duration of the pain then you 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 grade the pain from zero to ten depending so the patient will tell you how he's feeling where the pain is actually you know coming from and the degree of the pain so that's that for pain that's if you are asked during the OSCE procedure and another thing i want to um, point out is that you should also try and know the various range of these vital signs from blood pressure to temperature to pulse to respiration i'm going to leave it on the screen for you to take note of them for you to see them so yeah that is that for vital signs it is pretty easy it is simple just be accurate be smart and be time conscious because you are going to be um, vital signs for everything you are doing under five minutes you should be done five to ten minutes you should be done and you'll be time doing OSCE and you don't want to waste all your time you know on one procedure so when you are done you make sure you document like i said make sure you document even if you're not writing anything just pretend like you're writing something make sure you document your findings what you've gotten and you are good to go then after the procedure you thank your patient for compression and you know place your patient in a comfortable position make sure your patient is comfortable then you thank your patient for compression sometimes you might not have you know the opportunity to perform on the live patient Mostly what they what they use is Mr. Jones, like when I was in school. What we call what we use is Mr. Jones, like you know, a doll, but a bigger type of doll that looks like a human being. And sometimes, depending on the procedures, you know, that you have to carry out, you might need a life patient, you might need a life person to act as a patient or even an assistant when it comes to you know procedures that need assistance. So that is that after your after you are done with the vital signs, it's carried out, you've done everything you're supposed to do. The next thing is to gather all the equipment you've used, anyone that is, you know, needed to be washed, anyone that is that needs to be washed, any equipment that needs to be washed, you tell the examiner that you are going to gather your equipment, take it back to where they're supposed to be, and wash the ones that to be washed. And then you send it back to the equipment room or wherever you got them from and that is that you are done for the procedure you are done for vital signs you take back your equipment don't forget to remove your gloves and also wash your hand before you start any procedure and after you finish any procedure make sure you wash your hands make sure your hands are packed neatly make sure your 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 uniform is perfectly neat and ironed because your appearance also matters you wouldn't want to go into the husky room looking so haggard looking so dirty you have to look like a nurse that you are and also make sure that you are observant of everything around you make sure you are observant of the equipment or the instruments you are giving to carry out the vital signs so that's that for vital signs do well to 
subscribe to this channel if you are not if you want me to do any other procedure if you want me to come to talk about any other procedure in a simple and detailed way let me know in the comment section i will be waiting for your comments do well to subscribe if you're not subscribed like this channel comment share this video to people who need it and i'll see you in the next video till i see you in the next video bye